you can now edit your text plus in your viewer in Fusion and in the edit page. In the edit page, you're not going to be able to do it right away by just double clicking. All you have to do is turn on your Fusion overlay. Now you can double click and then write whatever you want and then you're good to go. Now inside Fusion, you just double click this again and you can write your text from there. It's a really nice addition. Now this is a little bonus tip, I guess. The normal text that is not a text plus allows you to drag these and then it has some snapping lines, which is pretty useful, I think. I thought there was a new feature, but I checked on 18.6 and it was there as well. So it's not a new thing, but it's just, I guess, a good reminder. It would be cool if you were able to do that with the text plus, actually. Another thing that used to happen in the past is that if you didn't have a font, so if you downloaded a template or a macro that was by somebody else, and you didn't have the font that they used, the viewer would just stay black and you were just confused about why it's not working. And then you had to go and change the font. Now, I'm not able to replicate this issue right here because I have all the fonts that I already have. But they mentioned that you would get an overlay notice that would say missing font or something like that. So now you know. If you have a numerical keyboard, all you have to do now, if you want to jump to like a certain timestamp on your video is with nothing selected, all you have to do is write whatever time you want to be at, let's say 10 minutes. And now you can see that on the screen right here, we went all the way to the minute 10 after you write that. So if you have a numerical keyboard, all you got to do is do that. I think it's said to hours, minutes, seconds, and then frames. So that's how it works. That way you don't have to scroll all the way across your timeline. And that would save you a bunch of time. Automatic speaker detection. To make this work, you actually need to have studio because the transcription doesn't work if you don't have a studio, right? So what I did here was that I actually covered this because it was from an old client. Now, one so you go to audio right here, but before you click transcribe, you have to select speaker detection. Now go back, right click audio transcription, and now click transcribe. After that, it will transcribe the whole thing, the clip that you used. And now you can see here that we have speaker one and speaker two, and they are detected properly. Now, the first time I did it, it was uh, three different speakers on screen, right? And I had the three audio layers and that confused it a little bit and made only speaker one to have that. So it's not completely perfect yet, but if each of your audio layers of each speaker is pretty clean, meaning that it doesn't interfere with the other speaker, like they're not overlapped in the same audio recording, then these will most likely work pretty much perfectly. And then here you can also now right click and then remove the silent portions automatically. And that will remove this right there as well. So that's one of the cool things that you can do if you'd like to do text-based editing. Change viewer background. What does that mean? Actually, it was a bunch of, I had to like test this out a bunch because I was not able to figure out what they exactly they meant, but I managed to make these work. Okay, we have this vertical clip right here so that we can see these a little bit better. If you go right here to the timeline view options, you have this viewer background. And what that does is basically you just click checkerboard and then the background will switch similar to the one that's in Fusion. And if you want it to be gray, you can actually make this be gray as well. That is one of the things that you can do now. Now, since we're in that section, let me show you this new button that you can use to create or use a fixed playhead mode. Now, some people come from other softwares that I think that it's more popular in the way that they work, that the playhead is fixed. So if you click that now, when you press play, your timeline would move uh, with the playhead, right? So if you press play, then it will just move that automatically. If you deselect like that, then the timeline won't move and it will just be normal like that. So you can move this individually. Now, if you keep this activated, when you move these, the whole timeline will move as well. So it's one of those things that is a matter of workflow preferences, I guess. Now, in previous versions, you were able to do that as well, but I can't remember exactly where that option was because it was a little bit more hidden, right? So now that's a little good and easy to find button that you have right there. Now, another cool thing that you can do now is have save guides. So if you go up here, first of all, click it to turn it on. And by default, the first time that you click it, nothing would happen because you have to select one of the options that you have right here. So let's say you want to have, you're working on something for social media. Now, ideally, if you were to create a vertical video, you would most likely already be on a vertical timeline, right? But here you can add all of them if you want so that you can see them and how the clip will 
adapt. Now, this is cool, for example, if you have to create something that is in a horizontal timeline, but also on a vertical timeline, then you can have these as well right there. That way you sort of have a way to keep that in mind, I guess, a little bit. So it's a pretty cool addition that you can have right here without having to bring on generators or other complicated things that will just clutter your timeline. Now, if you're looking for some cool DaVinci Resolve tools, make sure to check out my split screens toolkit, which has over 500 split screens that you can use. And also check out the paperfall effect toolkit that I've created, which allows you to create awesome paper effects on your videos. And this has over 200 elements that you can use on your projects. So for that, check out paperfulleffects.com to learn more about that. Let's continue with the video. Another new thing that you can do here is search effects in all folders. Now, I wasn't exactly sure what this meant, but you have this error right here now that allows you to search for something in all folders. Now, I'm not sure if that's all folders or of your computer. I usually have all my macros and stuff in the same place or similar place. So if I say search for paper right here, it already finds it, right? But that is how it works. Now, I'm not entirely sure how this works, but you can do that now. Once I get more information on that, maybe I'll create an update video on that, but that's the new option that you have right here. Since we're on the effects tab, one new function that you can do is double click these and now all the categories are going to be collapsed. And if you double click that, they will open again. Now, this is great if you don't want to have to scroll around to find something that you don't remember the name of. Now, in previous versions, you were able to create keyframes on open effects. So let me open at this blur, for example. You were able to create keyframes, but you were not able to actually adjust these keyframes. And this was a little bit complicated because if you're not able to adjust keyframes, then how do you control exactly what you want it to be? So they were all linears. Now you can actually press shift C and that will open the curve editor. And now you also are able to adjust the curvatures of the keyframes on open effects effects. So you can now add a curve on these and do the same again on this one. And now you have a little bit more control on the keyframes on the open effects that you have used. Since we're talking about effects, let's talk about the magic mask. It is said to be to have been improved. So I did a little bit of an experiment. I used the color page and fusion in 18.6 and in 19. And these are the results of the magic mask. Now you can see for yourself in my experience, these worked a little bit faster in DaVinci Resolve 19. Now, as for the quality, both were pretty much, I would say pretty similar. I did not change any of the values. I simply drew and then let it track. And these are the results of what you get with the new magic mask in DaVinci Resolve 19. You can now defocus backgrounds a little bit more easily and with probably better results. Now, how does that work? Well, first of all, you need to have a magic mask on your element, right? So track with the magic mask. After your subject is tracked with the magic mask, you can go and add the defocus effect and that will allow you to control the actual background. Now the defocus effect is right here on the color page. Just write defocus and drag that on the same node that has the magic mask. And now you can control the background like that. Now this will most likely obviously depend on the quality of your magic mask. So if you have a video that is a little bit more rough and it has a little more motion blur and your magic mask is not that perfect, then this might have a little bit of a harder time working, but that's how you can do it. It's pretty straightforward. And if you have a really clean video, then the results are pretty great, to be honest. Since we are in the color page, let me just tell you one awesome new feature that will make your good footage look even better. And that is called the NVIDIA RTX Video HDR. What this does is it basically adds HDR to a video that you already have. Now, this looks extremely awesome on this clip that is already a great clip because it was pretty cleanly shot, right? I got this from Mixkit, right? It's a stock video. If I activate this effect right here, to activate it or to add it, all you have to do is search for NVIDIA RTX Video HDR. Drop it. I would say that you should add this after you have all the other stuff, color balance and stuff like that. But then you can just adjust these right here and the result is pretty awesome. Now, let me tell you, this is for people that have NVIDIA RTX cards. So if you don't have it, then you might want to get one. If it is something you have to do, right? Now, uh, you do have a bunch of things right here that you can change. 
similar to a color space transform. So I'm not entirely sure if you would have to do these in addition to a color space transform. I guess you probably, if you're doing it last, then you might not have to do that, right? You just use the previous one that you have right here already. Since these probably will be already an, a Rig 709 video. This looks fine, right? But if you add the HDR, it just chef's kiss. I just like these the way that it looks. And I actually ran a little test to see how it would work on a non extremely well shot video. <laughs> so I shot this video of me, of this Kalimba that I have that I bought just so that I could learn to play the Avatar uh, little song. And then I stopped playing around with it after I learned that song. That was the only reason why I got this. So I shot this video on my phone and it's not a log video. So I shot this on my S21 Plus and this was on the normal camera app. And this is the result. So it looks pretty good. But if you already have a good video, then this makes it look even better. Inside Fusion, you now have the option to move around your viewer or your layout. So you have now two options right here, left flow vertical and then mid flow vertical. So now the weird thing is that these new layouts or pre layout presets look pretty much the same. So I'm not entirely sure what the difference between both are, but you have those new options right here. So you can do that now. You can change the, the flow right here. Yeah, they look pretty similar. I'm not sure what am I missing right here, but that's one thing, one new thing that you can do. So if you like to work on a vertical layout, then you can do that. I usually work on the default, so that's just a matter of personal preference. Now inside Fusion, you have a multi-polygon or multi-poly mask right now that is similar to a multi-merge. So what does, what this does is that you can now at different layers of polygons right here. We have one right here. Now, after you draw the first one, you can just grab right here and add a polygon. And you have a second polygon right here. You can also add a beast plane right here if you want to do that right here. And then each individual right here has its own control. So if you want to change this one, you can subtract these and then move these around and it will subtract from the other one. So it's a really useful tool if you usually work with a lot of polygons in for the same element, basically. If you work with shapes, let's add an X rectangle and an S ellipse. You have these right here and you want to mix both of these. You can use the S Boolean right here and mix both of these. If I move these a little bit here, press two on the, on the Boolean, we have a bunch of different operations right here. Intersection union, which is basically mixing both of them together, subtracts, it takes away from the other one. So the foreground takes away the background. And then the last one is XOR, which is sort of like a mix between of like masking anything that's in the middle. But the new thing here is that you have this option right here to keep the style mode, which is, let's say this circle is red or pinkish, or you can replace these. And that way you have control for both of the elements that you have added with the Boolean node right here. So that is one new thing that you can do if you use S shapes on your projects. There's also one new text type, which is the S text, which is a text that is based on the shapes method of working, which is basically vectorized. This allows you to create a bunch of cool, interesting things. And I already have a video that I made while it was on beta showing you how to create a really cool effect using the S text. Okay, now there's one new thing that has been added, which is a function on the duplicate nodes. If you have five copies, for example, now you can actually duplicate with a path. So if you duplicate a long path, all you have to do is draw your path. And then you have a bunch of different options right here that you can use to move your elements along the path or the duplicated elements. So this allows you to have a little bit more control of the duplicates in the path. You had to deal with just these. And after you move these a little bit, then you didn't have that much control over them. So that is one new cool thing that you can do if you like working with duplicates. And I can probably see these being used in a lot of interesting ways in the future. Ultra noise reduction. Okay, let's test ultra noise reduction with this video right here. Let me reset all the grades right here. 
to use the ultra noise reduction function all you have to do is go to here to the spatial noise reduction section and then click on ultra and r and then analyze these this will automatically analyze the values of the noise profile and then you're good to go now i'm not sure if you are meant to later on adjust these frames on the temporal noise reduction as well but i haven't seen a more more in-depth video on this maybe there are some colors that will cover these in a little bit more in depth than I am able to. So be on the lookout for that if this is a function that you would find useful on your projects. You can now preview, scheme, and scrub source audio channels in the inspector file. Now, what exactly does this mean? It took me a little while to actually figure out what this meant. At first, I thought it had to do something by double clicking over here, but it's actually, now if you go to file, once you click on an audio track or audio clip, same on a clip that you have already dropped in your timeline, simply go to file and now you can preview the audio right here by scrubbing your mouse along the track right here. This brings us to the next little thing that you can do. If you have ever run into the issue of your audio only coming from one side of your headphones, that is because the channels were set to just mono track, right? So you can now click here where it says format, go to custom, and that takes you automatically to the audio attributes section. And here you can change the format to stereo and then have the audio come from both sides on the embed channel one in this case. That way the audio is going to come from both sides of your earphones. And that is how you can fix that now as well. Now in the past, if you wanted to align audio tracks or sync, once you double click and then go to auto align clips, you didn't have the option to select your track number, right? What this means is that it uses track one as the main a component to analyze and then sync both of them or you can also do choose the second track or then use the mix which is takes both of them into account or you have the automatic option right here after you click sync then they will both well it will analyze these and then after a little bit depending on how complicated your audio file or how large your audio file is they will just get synced together where they're supposed to be yeah, this is not completely, this is not properly working <laughs> right now, but that is how it's supposed to work in theory. Now you can choose the different channels and that will take that channel as the main guide to analyze the audio from. Now on a different example, this will probably work better. Now, if you have a song that you want to use, you can now use the music remixer to adjust individual channels, let's say. I found these to work best if you either want to mute voices or just have the voice be present here we have the voice section and if we mute these it covered it pretty dang well to be honest now i found these a little bit more confused when i try to get rid of the individual tracks right here like the drums worked well because they were pretty present or pretty easy to identify but then we have only the voice right here, but you can still hear a little bit of the other elements coming in present right here. But I think it has to do a lot with this style of the song and if it was well produced, I guess. But there's one new thing that you can do. Use the music remixer and then play around with your music files to get a more interesting result from them. Let me share with you a little bonus tip that will help you out if you make videos for YouTube. Now, YouTube has a different target loudness level than other platforms. Now, for YouTube, you need a negative 14 loudness target level. Now, if you update it to 19 and you had these set up properly on previous versions, for some reason, these did, that setting didn't carry over when I checked. Okay, so after you open the project settings right here, you want to change the target loudness level to negative 14 then click on these three dots and then save these current settings as presets if you want to. Here you can rename these. But you want to make sure to set the current settings as the default preset. After you update these, then on future projects, these will be set to negative 14 and that way you don't have to change this again when you open a new project. So those are a couple of new things that you can do in Davinci Resolve 19. If there's anything that I missed that you think that is important, then make sure to share it down in the comments. That way other people can know about that as well.